It's a whole new game. The following is a presentation of Molstar Sports and Entertainment. This week on the TELUS Canadian Tour Golf Week, we travel to the Comox Valley on Vancouver Island and the Crown Isle Resort in Courtney, which played host to the first event on the Canadian Tour this season. We'll cover all the action from tee to tee as the Canadian Tour kicks off 1999. We'll meet tour alumnus Ray Stewart, who will give us the first of his Ray's Rules. Stefan Talbot will give us some insight into life on the European Tour in our player profile. That plus the golf report with John Gordon and more coming up this week week on the TELUS Canadian Tour Golf Week. Brought to you by Ericsson, make yourself heard. By Heineken, it's all about the beer. By Charles Schwab Canada, Canada's only full choice brokerage. And by Kelsey's, your neighborhood bar and grill. And hi, everybody. I'm Rod Black. Welcome to another edition of TELUS Canadian Tour Golf Week. All of those stories, plus our first look at outside the ropes, what it's like to be a professional golfer trying to make ends meet, sometimes without sponsorship money. But first up, we review the first tournament of the Canadian Tour season, the inaugural edition of the Crown Isle Open, which was held in Courtney on the beautiful Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Kevin? Jill? Nice to meet you. Come in. Want a beer? Sure. Be right back. The Heineken Highlights, presented by Heineken. It's all about the beer. Any doubts about the course at Crown Isle were quickly dismissed early in the week as the 7,024-yard Graham Cook design proved to be up to the challenge. Sean Haverstrow from Rapid City, South Dakota, was the first golfer to tame Crown Isle. He showed a deft touch in posting an opening round best 67 on Thursday. Kelowna's Bruce Cushion sizzled on his front nine, firing a 31 with approach shots like this on number 14. He finished the opening round one shot back of Haberstrow with a 68. Day number two saw the eventual tournament leaders come to the fore, including Florida's Ken Statton, who followed up his opening round 69 with a low round 67. Nice approach on 15. The birdie would drop him to seven under. Lexington, North Carolina's Ray Freeman matched Staten 67, draining the putt on number eight to go to six under. He finished the day one back. Aaron Oberholzer, who was profiled last week on the show, followed up his solid Q school play going seven under through two rounds, besting his opening round 69 with a 68 on Friday. Mostly thanks to this shot on the par 317. A beauty. The birdie moved him one back of stat. Cambridge, Ontario's Ian Leggett got off to another solid start this season. Great approach here. Put him six under through two rounds, just two back of the lead. Day three saw local boy Darren Griff leap into contention in a big way. Look at this putt on number three. He shot a 66, tying the course record. Finished the day nine under, three back. Another Canadian kept in contention. David Moreland, the fourth on 18. Beautiful birdie. He posted a third round 70 and moved into the hunt. Dirk Ayers of Falconer, New York, also lurking. Finished the day at eight under as well. Bobby Kalinowski of Scottsdale, Arizona, consistent through three days. Rounds of 69, 71, and 70 to get on the leaderboard. Kenny Statton continued his form on the first hole. Watch this for Eagle, just missing. Tap in for birdie. He took a four-shot lead into Sunday. While New Zealand's Paul Devonport, second on the money list last year, jumped onto the leaderboard on Saturday with a 68 to move to six under. 
picture perfect weather for the final round and more reason to smile at crown isle vp and gm ed moyes announced that next year's tournament would feature a purse increase to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that must have caught the attention of australia's scott wern watch this shot on 18 within eight feet but wern missed the putt and then even worse misses the comebacker he finished 10 under tied for third Ken Staten woke up on Sunday with a four-shot lead and did not wither. A near-perfect approach on 15. He had tap-in for birdie to go to 15-under. Aaron Oberholzer rebounded from a 74 on Saturday to fire a 67 on Sunday. Birdie on 16 finished tied for third at 10-under. David Moreland had his troubles. Nice chip here on 15, but he couldn't find the hole. His final round 71 was good enough for a share of seventh. Kalinowski tied Moreland for seventh. He was making a charge. Great approach on 15. Misses for Eagle. The birdie put him at nine under. But no one would catch Ormond Beach's Ken Stapp. The crowd on 18 gives him an ovation. Four rounds in the 60s. His 15 under total, four better than Nanaimo's Darren Griff. The first event of 1999 goes to Ken Staten, who battled about a vertigo, took first place of $27,000, his first win as a professional. Very solid, very steady. Uh, not too many uh, putts went in, but uh, I, stru I struck the ball very well today, and that's, that's what it took. Well, it's a great start for the season. That's what it means to me right now. Um, I, I won't know probably until things start happening to me because of this win. Um, I, again, I, this is my, my fourth year as being a golf professional, so I really, you know, I'm still learning out here. Well, what a way to learn. Learn and earn. Ken Staten, the winner. Darren Griff, top Canadian. Some of the other notables. Ian Leggett finishing five back. Rob McMillan, minus six. Arden Noel, minus four. Ray Stewart, also at minus four. And last year's Canadian Tour money leader, Brian Contact, uh, at minus one. Uh, Paul Parlane, who we were following, uh, missed the cut uh, the Aussie did at the Crown Isle Open. Now, one of the great things, not only do we get to see the highlights each week of the Canadian Tour's past event, we also get a chance to take an up-close and personal visit of the golf course. This week, one of those emerald jewels of Canada's West Coast. Just over the mountains on Vancouver Island and into the Comox Valley sits one of Canada's newest great golf resorts. Crown Isle is located in the town of Courtney, just a 25-minute flight from Vancouver. This Graham Cook design is a challenge to any skill of golfer. A gorgeous brand-new clubhouse houses an antique car museum, a fitness center and spa, and spacious dining and entertaining facilities. What we're offering here and, and continuing to develop is the full experience of golf, whether it's the golf course, uh, they've done a phenomenal job for every level of player. We're developing a world-class golf academy. The clubhouse has a pub-style restaurant as well as fine dining. And now our villas and in the future a 120-room hotel. We're going to be able to offer our guests the full package. This valley offers everything from mountain biking to world-class fishing with Campbell River just up the way. Uh, Mount Washington in the spring and in the fall when the ski hill opens. There's, there's every vacationer's dream right here in the Comox Valley. Well, this golf course has just got great variety. There's, there's uh, super par fives, short and long par threes, just real neat subtleties to each and every hole so that when you leave here, you've got the memory of each hole in its, in its entirety where some golf courses you may remember one. I think Crown Isle is the kind of golf course when you leave you can remember each hole right from 1 to 18.